but uh, you know, I wanted to ask you, and then I got a couple of of notes from from some of our pals who wanted to chime in with with their memories as well. Um, yeah, when I first saw the Briscoe Brothers, God, starting out, I think I want to say 1999 because I was watching a lot of indies back then um, in that area, that Northeast area, Delaware area, um, before ROH started, or it started on the same time. And, and I, think, then, I think it, I think ROH was like what 2002 or something like 2000, that. 2000, yeah, 2002. So I want to say, gosh, 2000. I'm, I'm, I remember like one of their first matches. There's two skinny kids and their brothers and their Briscoe brothers. And you know, I remember thinking that was funny because of Jack and Jerry Briscoe. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I that I almost thought it was like a parody of them. And and it took me a while to kind of get into them, you know, like I thought. They did a lot of just moves and stuff. And then I remember them going to Noah, doing big matches over there. And I was, but I kind of like, they kind of grew up in the last like six or seven years. I really liked their work and stuff. And I think they just got better. I never met them in person, though. I've seen them in person um, at that, that ill-fated Cow Palace show in uh, 2007. Um, there was a Ring of Honor show attached to that as well. Yeah. And we did like this morning, morning session show, like, you know, in front of like, I don't know, 12 people in Larry's Abisco. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I remember like afterwards, we grabs a bite to eat in like the, the lunch area of the Cow Palace there. And then I remember uh, them walking in. I, I didn't say anything to them. We just, you know, we're kind of just doing our own thing. But that, that was it. It's the only time I ever was in, you know, in their presence. But um, good talents, man. I mean, Jay's was really good in he can work singles, he can work tags. I like their characters, you know, but apparently their characters was just them, you know, turned mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And it's just unfortunate they never got a, that big run on national television because they're they're made for national TV, right? And well, well, 2013, the mm -hmm. rumor was was NXT yeah. at that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then so. they, and then they didn't want to touch them because of the remarks that uh, yeah. that were made. Uh, so I, I was like thinking back, I was like, I know I'm trying to think of when I would have seen them live. Uh, mm -hmm. it would have been WrestleMania 31 weekend, the Redwood city mm -hmm. show. So I think it's super card of honor. Mm -hmm. Main event was Jay against Samoa Joe, who had newly returned. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Cause I think he'd like, he they, came they on they TV, NXT, right? <laughs> like soon after that, right? Did he join NXT soon after that, right? Pretty soon, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so I remember that show, and that was the first time that I'd seen uh, Filthy Tom do his wrestling stuff with uh, Kyle O'Reilly and, yeah. and Bobby Fish. Uh, but yeah, so that would have been my my real first memory of them. And then when we went to the Madison Square Garden show, they were in a four way that was not very memorable. It was like a ten minute match. That that's right. Gorillas of Destiny one, yeah. There was, like, was like a four four tag team, uh, yeah, in, in that match. Uh, but really, like, I mean that that match that they had against FTR WrestleMania weekend this year mm -hmm. was like, okay, like this is a this is a different level. And and so I know there are people who are listening to us going like, yeah, we've known about these guys forever. And and I and I'm saying I, I've known about them as well, but I never really saw the the their matches you know to to that extent in and out you know i'd, I'd show up and, and hang out at dave's and watch an roh pay-per-view here and there yeah but never really focused on the the product so when i was when i saw that match with ftr i was like wow like this is a different level of tag team wrestling than uh you know than than we're used to seeing so uh i wanted to read uh our buddy nick mahmoud who is re really really close to roh right mm -hmm. like nick is you know, you go back and watch those shows um, and he's like in the front row, you know, anywhere near that. Uh, uh, where's where does Nick live? Is he like Rhode Island? In the front something? row. I, I know. But where does he live? <laughs> I, I, he's got a, he's out somewhere on the East Coast. I just figure front row in any <laughs> yeah. card in the East but, Coast. But yeah, but yeah all, lots of ROH shows you see Nick. Oh, in yeah. The, in the front row. For sure. And so he says that uh, his favorite memory was going to the after party at All In. So that would have been uh pre AEW and he said the first two guys I saw were Jay Lethal and Jay Briscoe talking to each other. Lethal was in a suit while Briscoe was still in his ring gear. 
Uh, even though he wrestled first that night against SCU, match uh, wise uh, was him defeating Adam Cole at Final Battle 2014 was pretty cool. Plus, watching the matches against uh, God Live were the most intense tag matches I saw. Um, you know, this, this Nick is is pretty close to that, and I, I know he was pretty yeah. shaken up. Uh, you know, like a lot of people were, but you know, Nick, Nick uh, I think he has a, a real affinity for for that company and and uh, those wrestlers uh and the other one that i had was uh paul fontaine uh roh historian the kayfabe roh historian uh paul fontaine so he's <laughs> this is a this is kind of funny but it, if you know paul this is a hundred percent paul yeah uh he said he met jay at a party he went to in dallas in 2016 i'm assuming that would have been wrestlemania 32 at a hotel room, it was mostly all ROH wrestlers, and a friend of his had had brought him. I, I'm I'm try, I was trying to guess who this friend could have been, uh, but I wasn't sure. Uh, I don't I don't want to speculate uh, on who Paul's friends are. Uh, but he says uh, that his friend is introducing him to everyone, and everyone's super nice, extending their hands, and you know he he knows the wrestling parlance of of shaking the hands, <laughs> and then he sees Jay. Jay starts staring at him, giving him the death stare. And he says, no offense, Paul Fontaine, but who the fuck are you? <laughs> and so Paul, uh, Paul says he'll never forget that. And he was also ringside at FTR versus uh, the Briscoes, the one that I was talking about, WrestleMania weekend, which is the best tag match he's ever seen live. So, you know, the, this is, uh, I saw... I saw, uh, I think it was in Philadelphia, there was a little TV hit where uh, the their mom, uh, Jay's mom, was saying, she was kind of talking about how they got into wrestling and I guess they built a ring and they would, him and him and uh, his brother would do the matches and they would videotape them and then they would watch them and then they would like go on YouTube and watch how to do it correctly. <laughs> I guess that's how they learn how to wrestle. Uh, so just self-taught and she just said, and, and I think she put it uh, pretty amazingly, by the way, considering her son just passed, you know, probably 24 hours since uh, they shot the, the video package. She said uh, something to the effect of not, you know, not like not letting the, the past, like not just thinking about the past, but just being thankful for mm -hmm. what they do have. And, uh, and I, you know, it, the, it's amazing to me how people in those moments can be that graceful mm -hmm. and just be able to be so human uh, when something so tragic, you know, ha had just happened. So yeah. I am going to heed uh, Jay's mom's words, and we are going to focus on the present. We are going to focus on AEW Dynamite. Uh, it was a little hard to watch, you know, wrestling knowing what had just happened i know a lot of people uh, had canceled their podcast last night because it, it was you know it was just sort of out mm -hmm. of respect but also just man it's it's really hard to talk about wrestling when somebody who is you know that influential in, in the business uh passes in that way and yet you know all the stuff that we're talking about when it comes to vince mcmahon and stuff like that's kind of like that exists because that's the business but this is kind of like the the real life uh, of mm -hmm. stuff happening and i know uh roh or roh nxt yesterday they made the mention like live on air, right? That yeah, what had happened I, or, or or something that happened. I believe uh, Vic Joseph and Booker T and all just did. I didn't watch the show, but I do know that it was a very hard day for the people, the former Zara at NXT, and you know a lot of people that have worked with Jay for many years. You know, yeah. and I think it took the win win of the sales of everyone. Obviously, the performers, but also the fan base too, right? Yeah, like it, it just just one of those, you know, really tough nights for everyone, um, you know, fans, you know, and and wrestlers and everyone else. So pretty sad. I was kind of like shook by that. You know, I know, like I said, I don't know him personally, but it just. It's I guess, you know, home, man, you know, father and all that, anything can happen anytime, you know, just I think we're I didn't even know. Like I was like off social media mostly yesterday yeah. Yeah. and then I popped on and I saw like our little group chat that we have. I was like, what? And then I, then I was like, just 
I just kept scrolling through, and I, it was one of those things where it just got overwhelming for me. And I, and I think yeah. I, I messaged you guys, and I was like, I'm popping off this, you know, social media just because this is too much. And so, yeah, yeah, just I almost kept thinking like it was fake, you know, like something, you know, I had, it was just weird, sort of surreal, surreal, yeah, definitely. Surreal but yeah, you know, but all the best to his family and his you know, friends and fans and all the, you know, so. You know, you, you mentioned the sort of the reality of the situation and, you know, as a father yourself and, and me too, like, it's like, you know, there are, there are moments that you think about that are kind of gnarly and you don't mm -hmm. like to think about them, but you're just sort of like, yeah, that is a possibility of happening at any time because life is so precious. Yeah. And earlier, I don't, I don't, I think it was yesterday as well, uh, some, uh, notes uh, from Kevin Nash's podcast had come mm -hmm. out I heard about where that. you could see that he was, you know, he's really struggling and, and trying to kind of cope while, while doing his podcast. And, you know, mm -hmm. some people were like, man, you know, I don't know if they should have recorded that show and, and they probably shouldn't have. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, Kevin Nash's son uh who who passed away not that much older than like my oldest son right and that's like a father's yeah. worst nightmare is you know parent not i'm not even gonna say father just parents worst nightmare is mm -hmm. you know your your child uh passing away before you and really not being able to uh have a full life like that that is something that you kind of think about you're like you know oh, gosh i hope that doesn't happen it's why i have it's why i still track both of my kids uh, uh mm -hmm. on on our phones because you know when they drive home i'm just checking to make sure that they got home uh, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that so you know that stuff does hit close to home um jay's accident uh gosh you know that it, it's he he was thir late late thirties thirty eight or something and thirty eight and you're just like you know imagine if if thirty eight was was kind of a you know the top end of your life just imagine how much you know he he should have had left and because of this accident so yeah. life is precious you know just uh, I'm just trying to make sure that you know like again heeding Jay's mom's words like just mm -hmm. be thankful what you, what you have and. Uh, no, no great transition here to to talk about a wrestling show, but you know, I think in the honor of the the folks and the performers who went out there and, and did their best, and in, in, in uh, not necessarily the probably a, a, a great mood or yeah, or even you know with a ton of normal energy, uh, and then Tony Khan I know did a show after the Rampage taping, which. Uh, was very uh, very. It was sort of like a an, an ROH show after the Rampage taping that they're going to put up on Honor Club, and I mm. think he's going to put it up on the YouTube as well. Main event was a uh, Claudio against uh, Christopher Daniels for for the title, and okay. a lot of the guys who knew Jay were able to talk about him, like do you know just get the mic and and talk about the guy. So mm -hmm. that I think uh, is going to be something folks will, will want to check out and, and watch um yeah. shows like that are really special AEW did the great one for for brody as well uh i think there's a good there, there's a great thoughtfulness that that tony khan has for for stuff like this so i imagine that will be just as thoughtful and just as loving as, as the brody one